So one of the very last pieces I did, uh, I used spices because the sermon was about missions and it was about uh, 2 Corinthians 2, which is, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through him spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. My mom was an art teacher, so growing up just to occupy me, I did a lot of art projects. I just found drawing infinitely fascinating and would doodle in church and doodle in school. At some point it sort of just became the thing that helped me do other things. I mean, art helps me think, it helps me remember, it helps me listen better. Really starting to think about why I make art and not just making it because I'm, I, I can do it, but to do it yeah, because it would be meaningful and, and conceptually significant. I've been trying to choose materials that um, already have a, connect, uh, a conceptual connection to the purpose that I hope the work serves. When did you start working with Spices? About two years ago. So um, I was working, I was making work for a church and Every week I would make a work that responded to the sermon we were having that week. So I would meet with the pastor, I would engage the scripture, I would meet with the worship pastor, and I'd try to come up with a work that could complement the whole service. And so one of the last ones I did was made out of spices, and it was um, a week on missions is what it was. So I wanted the congregation to think about the body of Christ and the gospel as a sweet aroma. And now, now I think about the designs almost like targets, so I think of them as places I hope that aroma now lands. And the thing about spices is it's multi-sensory, so it's not just uh, trying to engage the viewer through their eyes, but to make it multi-sensory where it becomes highly textural but also aromatic, where it's like you walk in the space and I'm chasing down as many of your senses as I possibly can to make the work stronger. Uh, really trying to tie smell to concepts or to thinking or to feeling things. Like, yeah, we don't do it all the time. Uh, but someone was saying today that, that they didn't know the artwork was in the room, but then they smelled it. And so then they started looking for it. So it was like, it's this nice kind of kind of extra level of engagement. The thing about faith where it's, it's important that it engages all the senses, and that it not just be um, some intellectual recognition of God, let's say, but to try to engage God um, through sight, and through touch, and through um, smells, in the case of my spice work. So when I read a scripture, for example, and um, I'm trying to understand it, uh, if I'm gonna go make an artwork about it, it actually helps me understand it more. There's something about wrestling with a material physically that also helps my mind comprehend things. So um, as much as art sometimes is about trying to show other people something, it has a whole lot to do with trying to teach myself something. It's not, it's not like, um, you know, I read a Bible verse and I figured out this really fantastic thing and now let me go tell the whole world about it. It's more of like, I read this Bible verse and I don't think I understand this. Let me let me make some work as a as a way of thinking through it further and trying to understand it better. It's my hope with work like this uh, that we would kind of have this multi-sensory pleasurable engagement with it as a way of kind of reclaiming the fact that that sweet smelling things can remind us of the sweetness of God. And his art is a metaphor for his faith, for Christianity, for, you know, it's about building relationships, it's about community, it's about sharing because the art can't just be made by one person or appreciated by one person. But I think just the fragility of it, that these, they're so tantalizing, you know, they're such a sensory experience that you can't get from just looking at his work online or looking at it on, uh, you know, postcard or something. There's so much texture there, and the fragrance is just overwhelming. It's got me kind of choking up right now. Even. Because I want my work to relate to both a Christian audience and a secular audience, a non-Christian audience. And I think it's done it well. I think it's, it's bridging that gap really well. And it's the same work to both communities. Here's the thing that always happens with art and faith. Either the faith is really great, 
man, you're a faithful person, but your art is terrible. <laughs> or it's the reversal. It's your art is great, but your faith's pretty missing here. It's pretty weak. It is so hard to bring those two worlds together, which has been kind of my endeavor through undergrad and grad school, just to bring the two things together in a way that doesn't compromise either thing. Uh, I make temporary work or ephemeral art, and people ask me all the time, why do you do that, and also, how does it feel when it gets destroyed? And to me, I always respond um, that it feels true. It just feels close to life that things come and things go, that, um, you know, I, I try to share things that I consider sweet and beautiful, um, but I don't try to stop people from stepping on those things. So for me, it's just sort of an acknowledgement of, of the impermanence of life and the kind of fleeting beauty of things. He was just asking me about what I did. I told him I was an artist, and then I told him about the work that I did. He was like, oh man, that's cool, and I showed him a picture of it. He said, wow, that's great. How do you, how do you preserve it? How do you keep it? I said, oh, I, I don't. I don't keep it. And he said, oh, well, that's a waste of time. Well, you know, things don't last forever, and sometimes Artists pretend like they do, but I think it's truer to life to just have something that really is kind of a one-of-a-kind experience, and you have to see it and smell it to really experience it in person. To be able to make them and to know the process in which, like, to create these kind of sculptures is fascinating, and it's, it's, it's a one-of-a-kind experience. It's definitely a very sensory experience. Um, very kinesthetic. The best art always moves a person and it makes the person feel like they're better for having experienced it. Definitely broadens the definition of art for me. I would not have thought spices would be on the ground in designs looking this cool. I love the, obviously the smell of it. I love the design and everything was, was really great. I would say that the first thing I noticed was the attention to detail. Um, it's very intricate and very elaborate. I guess I find it interesting how someone can make something out of something so seemingly, I guess, just random and inconspicuous. A household item that you don't really assume much of, but can make these incredible sculptures out of. I found that absolutely fascinating. I guess I'll take out away from it the idea of not looking at something and only seeing it as one thing, but seeing or knowing that it can be more than just that. His choice of colors, it's just fascinating to me. Makes me personally feel like um, more creative and makes me want to go out and doodle and find out what I can create. There's something about art that can skip all my headiness and get into my heart. There's something, I make art to feel things. It's sort of like this personal reminder that having been in this place, um, it, it should smell a little bit different if I've, if I've sat and worked and breathed and believed there for a while.